Testing, testing, one, two, three, testing. Okay, so we're going to start chapter two. We're in uh, Simplifying Algebraic and Expressions 2.1 from Al Grosch's book, Developmental Math 2. So, Simplifying Algebraic Expressions, if you remember from some of our previous lectures, an algebraic expression is a combination of numbers and or variables, letters, with the operations of addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. To simplify an algebraic expression just means to uh, use the components of that expression and make the expression into a more simple form. So we're going to look at this first expression, negative 2x times 3y, and this is all just multiplication. When we simplify an algebraic expression, we can move the coefficients or the numbers to the front. So we're going to move the negative 2 and the 3 to the front, and the variables x and y go to the back. So we always move the coefficients to the front. When the, when the expression is all multiplied, we move the coefficients to the front, the variables to the back. And now we can actually simplify this by multiplying the coefficients. Negative 2 times 3 is negative 6 and the variables tag on to the back. So this is negative 6xy. We're going to practice with some of these examples using the same concept. Since these are all multiply, we can multiply the coefficients in the front. Negative 5 times 2, the variable stays in the back. So this becomes negative 10x. On number 2, the coefficients are already in the front. So these fractions are both the coefficients. If we multiply these fractions, of course, you might want to use some cross-canceling here because there are common factors. These are both divisible by 2, and these are both divisible by 3. And, of course, the new factors then give us 1 over 1, the variable is x, and that simplifies to just 1x. We usually don't write the coefficient 1. We would usually just write this as x. On number 3, we have a lot of factors here, negative 4 times a, negative 2 times b, negative 3 times c, but the operation between all these is all still multiply. So again, we're just going to bring the coefficients to the front, negative 4 times negative 2 times negative 3, the variables to the back, a, b, c. And now we're just going to multiply these, and of course we learned in a previous lesson how to multiply these together. How many negatives are there? Negative times negative times negative gives us a negative. 4 times 2 times 3. 4 times 2 is 8. 8 times 3 is 24. So this is negative 24 ABC. On this question, this is similar to number 3. There's just a lot of uh, numbers and variables all being multiplied together. So we'll bring the numbers to the front, the coefficients. Negative 2 times 2 times negative 1. From here here and here, and then the variables, uh, H, E, L, P, which spells help. We're going to multiply the coefficients together, negative times positive times negative. Two negatives are going to multiply together to give us a positive product, and 2 times 2 times 1 gives us 4, H, E, L, P, for help. At uh, the top of the page, we're going to talk about distributive property. Distributive property is a way for us to use multiplication to um, get rid of parentheses. We're going to uh, deal, illustrate here why it works. Uh, when we use order of operations, we would simplify inside these parentheses first. 3 plus 5 is 8, and then 2 times that 8 makes 16. Distributive property tells us that we can multiply the 2 times the 3 and then add that to the 2 times the 5, which is here. When you do that, you end up with 6 plus 10, which is still 16. This is an example just showing you how distributive property and why it works. They do come out to be equal when you multiply what's on the outside times the two terms on the inside individually. The only time we really need to use it is, of course, when we have variables involved. So in this example here, 
uh, we would not be able to add the x plus the 3 because they're not like terms. So we would have to multiply negative 2 times x and then negative 2 times 3, and that simplifies the expression for us. Negative 2 times x plus 3, and I usually use arrows here, negative 2 times x is negative 2x, negative 2 times 3 is negative 6, so this expression becomes negative 2x plus 6. Okay, I know I just said negative 2x plus 6, but it's not plus 6. It's negative 2x minus 6. So we're going to go down here, and we're going to use distributive property on these examples down here. And again, we use distributive property because the terms inside the parentheses are not like terms. We're going to talk about like terms here in a middle, minute, but we can't add 5x plus 3 to get rid of these parentheses. So we're going to distribute the 2. We're going to do 2 times 5x plus 2 times 3. So that's just, if you use arrows, 2 times 5x, 2 times 3, and that comes out to be 10x plus 6. Here we're going to do the same thing. We're going to multiply times negative 3. Negative 3 times negative 2 is positive 6. Negative 3 times negative 4y is positive 12, I'm sorry, that's an x, positive 12x, negative times negative makes positive, negative 3 times 2y is negative 6y. So this is now our new expression. It's a simplified form of this. So we're simplifying expressions. On number 3, we have this interesting negative sign out here. This is just a representative of negative 1 because we don't usually write the 1 coefficient. So this really just means negative 1 times x minus 4. So then you can distribute the negative 1. When you multiply anything times negative 1, it really just changes the sign. So negative 1 times x is negative x. Negative 1 times negative 4 is positive 4. On number 4, we have an interesting thing where we have the 4 multiply times the 6x minus 5, and also the 2 on the back side here, but it's also multiply. So this is a 4 times an expression times a 2. Uh, there's a couple different ways you could do this. You could just distribute the 4 first, you'll get a new expression, and then you'll distribute the 2 to that new expression. I think it's a little bit easier. If you remember, multiplication is commutative, which means you can move things around without changing the value. 3 times 2 is the same as 2 times 3. You can change the order of multiplication around. And if you do that with this type of expression, you can move this 2 over here to the front and rewrite this as 2 times 4 times 6x minus 5, which you can then simplify starting from the front. 2 times 4 is 8. 8 times 6x minus 5 is distribute. So we're going to distribute 8 times 6x is 48x. 8 times negative 5 is negative 40. It's the same answer you would have gotten if you if you distributed the 4 and the 2 individually. Same answer, but I think this is a little bit faster. It's a little bit easier to do mentally. So we end up with 48x minus 40. On the third page here, we're going to start, start talking about like terms because this has to do with simplifying. Like terms are terms with the same variable raised to the same power. And here we have some examples of like terms versus unlike terms. So let's look at like terms. Like terms have the same variable with the same exponent. So 2x and 5x are like terms because they both have x and their exponents are the same. But 2x and 3y are not like terms. They don't have the same variable. Negative 4x cubed and 2x cubed are like terms. They both have x cubed. 5x squared and negative 6x squared are not like terms. The exponents are different, so these are not like terms or unlike terms. 2 fifths x squared y and x squared y are like terms. They both have x squared y. But x squared and x squared y are unlike terms. They don't have the same variables. This one has a y, but this one doesn't. So we're going to... Um, we're going to talk about adding and subtracting like terms because it turns out in algebra you can multiply anything, which is what we just practiced, but you can only add and subtract like terms. So when we go down here to example one, 
we're going to look for the like terms first. Which terms have the same exact variable? Negative 3x and 5x have the same variable. The 4x squared is different. So these two terms, the like terms, negative 3x and 5x, are going to get added together. And we do that by just adding the coefficients. So when we add negative 3 and 5, we get 2. The variable stays on. So that becomes 2x. Uh, the 4x squared does not have anything to add to, so it's just hanging on here. And this is simplified now because we've combined all the like terms. On number 2, we're going to first identify the like terms. 5x and 8x are like terms because they both have x. Negative 6 and negative 1 are also like terms. They don't have any variables. When we add 5x plus 8x, we add the coefficient, and that makes 13x. When we add the negative 6 and the negative 1, we get negative 7. So that's simplified now. On number 3, we're going to identify if these are like terms, and you have to look carefully because there's more than one variable. This is negative 3x squared y. This is 5 xy squared, and they sound very similar, but the exponents are different, so these are not like terms. So we really can't add them because they have to have the same variables with the same exponents. So these are not like terms, so I'm going to make a note here, not like terms, um, already simplified, because there's nothing else we can do there. On number four, again, we're identifying where the like terms. So which terms have the same variables with the same exponent? It looks like the negative 2x squared and the negative 4x squared are like terms. And when I add them together, I get negative 6x squared. Negative 2 plus negative 4 is negative 6. The other two terms are actually not like terms because this one has an x. The 5x has an x term, but the 3 doesn't. So we can't even add those, so they're just hanging on. So we have 5x plus 5x plus 3. On number 5, we can't see where the like terms are until we distribute. So the first step in simplifying is to get rid of parentheses by using distributive property, and then we'll look for like terms. So we've got two steps here in simplifying. We're going to start by distributive property. So Let's see if I can make this. There we go. Let's make it bigger. 5 times x is 5x. 5 times 3, positive 15. Use this negative sign with the 2. Negative 2 times 4, negative 8. Negative 2 times negative x. Negative times negative is positive, so this would be positive 2x. This is the negative 1. Negative 1 times 3x is negative 3x. Negative 1 times negative 1 is positive 1. And now we're going to look for like terms. So it looks like I have a 5x, a 2x, and a negative 3x. These are all like terms. They all have x. When I add those coefficients together, I get 5 plus 2 is 7. 7 minus 3 is 4. So I get 4x from those three terms. The other three terms, 15, negative 8, and positive 1, are also like terms. So when I add them together, I get 15 minus 8 is 7, plus 1 is 8. So I get 4x plus 8, and this is your simplified expression now.